I feel like shit. Monday, Monday, happy days. Tuesday, Wednesday, happy days. It's just one of those happy days. The weekend comes, but I go hard. Am I cool? So you'll stop playing games. There we go, perfect. Good evening everybody and welcome to the Mood of the Nation podcast. Here is episode 8. I am your host for this evening, Chief Moody. Oh my god, so I know I was meant to start at 6, I'm about 5 minutes late. <laughs> There's a good reason for that, you see. So, uh, run about say quarter to 6, uh, my laptop for some odd reason decided to start re- restarting itself. Uh, which it wasn't even going to be like a small uh, reboot or like a small update. It was literally just one of those updates where it would take forever to, to download. So I was like, right, screw this. I need to get this out of the way so that I can actually do the stream. So my laptop has not been fully updated or anything like that at all, but I'll do it after the stream is, is all done and dusted. But talk about perfect timing regarding to that. <laughs> talk about perfect timing. I do see there's 26 people watching, which is really good. Uh, <laughs> Moody updates. Uh, shit, Windows, get a Mac. <laughs> nah, I don't know. Maybe I, I, I'm not really a fan of Apple, but but I understand that, I, that Windows is not entirely that great either. Uh, but like I said, uh, there's about 25 people watching the stream just now, which is still really good. Hopefully more people will tune into the stream later on, but who knows? Maybe not, maybe so, but we'll, we'll, we'll definitely see. Uh, let me just take the time to have a look and see who's in the chat. I did see Linda was there, but I, couldn't, I can't really see her comment anymore. But we have Darwin Fox. Hello, how you doing? Thank you for watching the stream as always. Amanda Lee, thank you once again. Budgie Burger, hello sir, how you doing? If it's a sir, I'm, I'm not entirely too sure. But Scottish Tam, hello, how you doing? Thank you for watching the stream. We have Cyborg, Shalom <laughs> Cyborg, how you doing? Thank you for watching the stream. And also for sharing the stream on uh, your, uh, well, your Telegram channel. I think it's, no, not technically your Telegram channel, but PA Scotland's Telegram channel, I should say. But thank you very much for that. Really appreciate that. Uh, Scott Sarmer, how you doing? Thank you for sharing the stream as well. Really do appreciate that. Uh, let me see here. <laughs> Jojo Gizmo, Moody Moody Moody, oi oi oi, thank you very very much for tuning in, I really do appreciate that. Uh, da, 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 da. What Tyler 1381, 1381 I should say, Th- thank you for watching the stream, really appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, let's get the party started Moody boy, uh, we're, we're here already so, a bit late but we're here, we're definitely here now so. I appreciate your uh, you guys your patience for, for, for that uh, folks, I really do appreciate that. Uh, Mutt Tuck, hello, how you doing? I never really could tell if it's the afternoon or if it's evening. I think it's evening, 
to me, when it gets to like maybe just after five o'clock and maybe around about half past five, six ish, it becomes like evening to me. But that's my opinion on that. Maybe for some, it's still the afternoon. Maybe not. But again, that's just a very like short thing to say. But uh, English t sailor, hello, how you doing? Thank you for watching the stream. Jacob J forty six forty forty seven forty six. Thank you for watching the stream. Really appreciate that. Uh, let's see. Uh, Henry Hill. Hello, how are you doing? Shinobi, thank you for watching the stream. And I think that's about... Oh, there's Julia. Hello, Julia. Hello, thank you for watching the stream. Uh, let me see. I think that's about it so far. So, Oh, and lastly, Ragnar71, thank you for watching the stream as always. I really do appreciate that. Thank you. And he's right. 28 people are watching right now. Maybe 27. Smash that like button, folks. Yes, definitely do that. Smash the like button. Share the stream around. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe to the channel for more content. Really would appreciate that. So, before I get into the first uh, topic at hand, which I know is going to be a very... Well, I don't really want to spoil it too much, but... <laughs> wait, wait, hold on one second here. I think St. Harrison... <laughs> Another uh, content creator from our side, St. Harrison, has shared the stream as well. Uh, he shared uh, the mood of the nation episode ten, and but called it jock talk. <laughs> uh, well, that's that's uh, Saint Harrison, but definitely uh, give him a watch. I think he mostly makes videos on Odyssey. I think he still does YouTube here and there, but it's mostly on uh, Odyssey at this point. So, but definitely give him a follow if you haven't done so already. That, that would be great. Oh, speaking of new subscriber, uh, Ben Mc. Reynolds, I think it is. Subscribe to your channel. Well, thank you very much for that, Ben. Thank you for sub subscribing. Really do appreciate that. Uh, let me see here. Hopefully more people will subscribe to the channel when the show goes on, but that would be really great. As I said before, um, I think I've up to now 962. It was 190... I'm sorry, it was 963 or 964, but for some odd reason, it just keeps going up and down, but then kind of go back, back down again. I don't know if maybe if that's the older subscribers maybe tuning out of my channel or maybe it's YouTube being incredibly gay. I don't know, but there's always a reason for it. So, But like I said, if you, it, definitely make sure you're subscribed to the channel because I think I'm very, very close to hitting 1,000 subs. Uh, so if I get to 1,000 subs before I get suspended off of YouTube... I'd be really happy with that. You know, that would be great. And I do see here there's 31 people watching, so... Uh, right, so let me get to the first topic here. Now, this is an Austrian uh, news story, but I've managed to get it uh, translated into English so that, of course, I know exactly what it, what it sounds like. or well, not sounds like, what, what it's, of course, uh, saying for myself and also for people in the chat. Uh, so let me have a look here and see... If I can just share the screen right now, let's start from there. I'll also share the audio just in case, although I, don't, I highly doubt there will be any video. Girl leaned strangled against a tree in Vienna. Parents of the dead, Leone, at age 13, defend themselves, we were not bad parents. So I've seen this already on Telegram, a lot of people have shared this already. This is about the 13 year old uh, Le Leone or Leonis. Um, Elterm, I think, pronounce her name. It is definitely Austrian, so um, it's uh, it, it's reading through the story, of course, hearing about what exactly happened to her it is a very uh, horrible story to talk about. But again, I think it's important to, to talk about this uh, new story because, again, like I said before, it's a perfect case as an example of why multiculturalism and, of course, diversity just simply does not work whatsoever. So, like as always, I'm going to read out some parts of the, of the article and then, uh, of course, throughout the article reading, I'm just going to give my thoughts about this. So, this was published on the 3rd of July, 2021, which uh, was a few days ago. Because I think this, this all bro broke out, I think it was maybe like a week ago, or uh, something along the, uh, like that. But anyway, uh, Leonie's parents from Austria plead, please don't judge us. On June 27th, the body of the girl was found leaning against a tree in Vienna. It's a 13-year-old Leonie from, uh, from Tullin. I think I pronounced that right. Again, it's Austrian. So, Four suspected perpetrators are caught within the next few days. Now the parents of those killed are hated online. The 13-year-old's body was found leaning against a tree early in the morning in Vienna, uh, Drostad. I think I pronounced that again. Uh, Donestad. 
I think it's Padona Stab, but again, might not be too sure. Because it is Austrian at the end of the day, so again, not trying to make excuses, but uh, since June 27th, nothing has been the same for Leone's parents as it, as it was before. They woke up the day of and their 13-year-old daughter had not returned home. However, this had already happened twice as the parents report on uh, Hui at dot at. It must be like a separate news website, uh, Austrian news website or something like that. Uh, or maybe to do with like, the, the uh, Austrian authorities. Anyway, the mother checked her cell phone. Her rebellious teen hadn't contacted her since 10 p.m. Saturday night. She called the friend she was traveling with, but she was home at midnight. The native of Nuremberg then reported the missing person to the police. In the afternoon, the worried mother heard of a body found in Vienna at, at Donestad, but there is but there it was said that the deceased was around 18 years old she didn't know anything but she that, but, but then she heard more details about the about the found body on television and suddenly the 40 year old was overcome by a terrible fear um melanie p so this is of course the mother when will it stop my pretty child um let me see melanie p said says that the, that she recognized her daughter immediately based on on the characteristics especially the distinctive color of the eyes and the sweater, the pants and the, and the Nike sneakers. I immediately called the police and hysterically yelled at the poor officer uh, that he killed, that, 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 that he liked, uh, matched the images immediately. Then Leone's brother identify, brothers identified the body. It was actually her little uh, Leone. The mother couldn't beat the details of death. In phone calls with the Austrian newspaper, who ate, again, I'm sure that's how you pronounce it, she asked repeatedly, third fourth suspect uh, when does this stop somehow i, I could could have understood one of them uh, but so many about but about my pretty child according to the previous investigations but it is clear that at least four men gave the girl uh, drugs in an apartment in vienna br brutally raping her and strangling her the 13 year old was then wrapped in a persian persian a persian sorry carpet by the perpetrators and transported 100 meters from the crime scene uh, filed on the tree like garbage. The suspects showed no remorse after their arrest. One was com comfortably eating pizza in a Vietnamese uh, pub when he was finally arrested. The other was enjoying himself on a, on a skate rink. According to the Austrian police, they did not show any emotions during the interviews. So Vienna four suspects, we can hardly understand it, and then we are hated. Now the 40-year-old from Tallinn is trying to be strong in lower Austria for their four children and for her husband. Trying to get in through the day somehow, but they keep getting crying fits. I didn't eat anything for three days. Now I've got some uh, astronaut food. It has to go on some, somehow. It has to go on somehow. My four children need me, said the mother in an interview. The family, however, suffered a lot from hateful comments on social networks. We are portrayed as bad parents. We are not says Papa Hans a W uh, Shaken <coughs> W or uh, Shaken we couldn't chain or lock our child up. She was rebellious and always did what she what she just enjoyed. And she always told us that a free spirit adds the grieving father. Leonie Leone just didn't come home tell the parents of the dead Leonie from Tullin in, in Austria. According to Austrian Youth Protection, people up to the age of fourteen are allowed to stay in public places and events without their parents from 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. Lately, there have been arguments between Leone and her parents. They say the teenager had repeatedly yelled, re rebelled against his parents, uh, did not stick to agreements, and repeatedly stayed over away overnight. That's why we switched on the youth welfare office. Leone was also in a crisis center in Holobrun for about a week. Then we tried, we, we stripped, uh, then we try to restrict returns to times like 6 p.m., 7 p.m., then 8 p.m., so gradually increasing. Uh, that went well for a while, and then Leone just didn't come home, and, and we went to the police or looked for our, our daughter, said the parents in, in the Today interview. Uh, parents of the, of the kill, Leone, 13 in Vienna, the lost tears our hearts apart. Uh, so, re regarding this article so far, I know it may, it may sound like, like the, the, the grammar and such is, is a bit kind of weird. Again, like I said before, this is like an Austrian 
uh, news story. So, of course, it is translated. I don't know if it would be completely translated well into proper English, but again, with Google tra Translate, that's how I'm able to read this out for you guys. So, uh, after the death of, uh, of their daughter, and even, sorry, just real quick, um, so far in, it's just, it's, it's just unbelievable what happened to her, of course. And even hearing about the, the perpetrator has committed this, this act uh, on, this, on this little girl, uh, again, just showed absolutely no remorse whatsoever. It really does come off as like uh, they showed no remorse. They d didn't really give a damn. They did not give a damn about what they did to, to this uh, poor girl. And I, I would imagine so they would probably do it all over again if they, if they managed to try it. If they, of course, didn't get caught uh, uh, with this whole uh, case. Uh, but so thankfully they, they they've been apprehended uh, like sooner rather than later because I, I like I said before I'm pretty certain that if this were to continue then it would be way worse than what happened to to this girl. Um, let me have a look here and see here. Right, perfect. After the death of their daughter, the family was besieged and attacked. Yesterday, we wanted to go to the OB and buy bamboo mats to cover the garden fence because of the many annoying questions. People are lurking everywhere at the moment, says Melanie P. of the newspaper. But there is a support from Austrian politics. Uh, Chancellor Sebastian Kurz had already publicly announced that in this case, he would proceed with the full severity of the law. And this is a quote from uh, victim lawyer uh, Florian Holworth. I, th I think he pronounced it. I might pronounce it wrong, but again, Austrian. So what they write here is, The Ministry of the Interior contacted me on Thursday. I wanted to know whether it was possible for Chancellor Sebastian Kurz to contact the family. The hostility and accusations that rain down on the family are difficult to bear. These guys are par primarily to blame the and, and politics in part. But don't judge us. We loved Mel Leone more than anything. The loss of tears are hearts apart. Uh, of course, this is what the parents say on, in the Today interview. The mother adds, our youngest son said that the time would be very difficult for the family now, but but that difficult, or or but that difficulty, he did not expect that either. The only the rebellious team from Tallinn on on the Danube, if I can pronounce it. According to her mother, Leone used to be a very good swimmer. Then the thirteen-year-old changed school. The change was not easy for the for the young people. Uh, to quote, she had a strong will. If she didn't want to go to school, she and then she didn't go. If she didn't want to come home, then she didn't come. She was a rebel, She and we always raised our children to be anti-authoritarian and independent, end quote. Nevertheless, the parents had a good relationship with their daughter. They adored the 13-year-old. They empathized. The pain of this loss and the overcoming of this uh, bestial act are certainly task enough to, from aggrieving parents at this point. And that's the end of the article right there. So like I said before, I've, I've came across this news story on Telegram. I know people like Laura, Tal Laura Taller shared it. Uh, I believe Mark Collette shared it. I know uh, some of the uh, PA channels have shared it on Telegram. So I really want to have a look at this further as well. And what I've just uh, described with this article uh, during this time, again, um, the... the St. Harrison, the ultimate rebellion hanging around with joggers, uh, but it's just, it's just, and even with Taylor, I completely agree with this, we were never asked, so again, like I said before, this, this whole new story right here, uh, it's, um, hold on one second, chance quiet, because we, we can all do, do as Fed post at this point, um, the, the, so the fact of the matter is, is that, this is clearly a perfect case example of, multiculturalism just clearly does not work whatsoever. Now, what really irks me the most is reading through the article of, of the amount of abuse that the parents have received because I guess they were trying to shift the blame on the parents as if it was the parents' fault. Never mind the fact that the perpetrators took this lassie away back to their apartment and did all kinds of barbaric things to her. But, oh no, they're not to blame. They're probably the victims. So let's just shift the blame on the parents. It's just, it's, it's just unbelievable. Un absolutely unbelievable. Uh, let me see. Ramblin' Rattlesnake. Uh, howdy, how you doing? Thank you for watching the stream. Amanda Lee. 
It's like the grooming gangs, they treat our children worse than animals. Yeah, exactly. And even the English sailor. Uh, sailor. Manchester Arena, Neil Bomber was re rescued and imported by the Royal Navy. It's just... Yeah, in other words, it was her fault. Yeah, of course, it's the victim's fault. Let's, let's not point the finger at the perpetrators and say, you know, these people right here are complete scumbags. They are horrible, inhumane, subhuman garbage who will do all kinds of, of, of barbaric things to any for any person. But no, 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 no. They're, 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 they're the victims here. We should, we should help these people because they, they, yes, they commit really horrible, heinous acts, but they, they don't deserve that this kind of treatment. Instead, point the finger at the victim and point the finger at the parents for, for, for this horrible crime. They're the ones at fault here. It's just the amount of mental gymnastics people have to go through to um, to try and make it out as if like oh no it's, this is not the problem but here's the the problem here if you, if you, if you get what I mean it's just it's shameful it really is shameful how how just completely uh, cut these countries have have fully become uh, I I don't really want to say but is anyone really that surprised of seeing the left or any type of leftist would uh, make that point. In terms of again, let's just uh, completely blame on on the lassie and, and their victims. And I, I love this part here from Donald Fox. Nothing on the mainstream media. Yeah, that's absolutely true. I've never heard of, about this whatsoever from the mainstream whatsoever. Never an, like an art, never an, a news report or anything like that at all. The only thing that I've, I've really seen about this case was a news story. Uh, I think it was two, maybe three of them. <clears throat> um, that was a. Uh, showcase on like an Austrian news uh, channel but that's it you I never heard of this from any of the British press or American press or anything like that at all the only time I've ever heard about this this case and what happened to this lassie was on telegram and that was it if I never had telegram I would never have heard about the story whatsoever um, so again it really goes to show seen Floyd he's far from that dude <laughs> Um, it really goes to show that not only is is uh, what happened to this last year was horrible, but there's clearly like a certain agenda that's going on here, because well, man, everyone knows exactly what would happen uh, with this. But could you imagine if um, if the races were completely reversed? If Leone was not, or Leonis, how you want to say her name, if if she was not white, if she was not a white Austrian uh, girl. As she was like uh, African descent, Middle Eastern descent, or Asian descent, or, or basically anything other, uh, anything non-white, uh, this would have been printed on, on on every news story that like everyone would be covering it. But because it's a bunch bunch of uh, migrants doing this to a, a white woman or a white girl, I should say, then all of a sudden it's dead quiet. No one will ever see a peep about this. You know, I, no, this is going to uh, completely uh, ruin the the agenda we're, we're, we're trying to get out here. Because this again, I've I've said this many many times on the on previous episodes, but it's clearly once again showcasing a blatant anti white agenda that's going on just now. I know it's a bit of a cliche to say at this point, but it's it's entirely true. There is clearly. An agenda going on that's trying to, to make uh, white people look bad. It's trying to uh, denigrate them as, as humanly possible. And of course, the mainstream media, you know, they they'll do anything they can to try and make us look bad. And it's disgusting. It really is disgusting. Um, let me see what else is said here. Da -da -da. Oh, ugly truth. Hello, how you doing? Thank you for watching the stream. Uh, Fourteen as well. Uh, let me see. English sailor, the Manchester Neil Bomber was was quite clear that he was correctly motivated by pure Islamic uh, theology. He was not an extremist, merely devout. Yes, exactly, exactly, my dude. That's definitely spot on with that as well. Uh, Saint Harrison writes: A Greek site is saying that the parents are suing the government for not deporting one of them. Well, you know, at, at that point, they definitely should sue the government for that because the government they're, they're not going they're probably not going to do a single thing about this. Um, they're probably 
just going to just as a, 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 pretty much what we're seeing just now, just try to sweep it under the rug and act like I said nothing, nothing like this ever happened. Uh, we've seen many types of of news stories similar to this in the past, where the victim is white and the perpetrators on are non-white, but the mainstream media will be absolutely silent at that and will never address it whatsoever. It's. Uh, like I said, it's just it's, I know it's, it's a bit of a, like a horrible story to start off with, but I think it's important to cover the story because um, the amount of of of, of uh, white people that have been killed because of multiculturalism is just getting bigger and bigger and back bigger. It's, it's not decreasing or anything like that at all. It's just only going to get worse from here. So, what I would ask for people, um, Oh, DDJ, hello, how you doing? Thank you for watching the stream. And also Ant, thank you for watching as well. Their re religious teachings allow this. Yeah, Grand Islam, and that's, that's, that's definitely true. It's a very barbaric religion, uh, and I would definitely would never want, want... It's definitely not welcome here in Europe, that's for sure. Definitely not welcome here whatsoever. Uh, the grooming gangs isn't grooming, it's a form of jihad to attack a nation from within. They did it uh, in Spain and the Holy Lands. <clears throat> Indeed, the castration at least. I definitely agree with everyone here saying castration by squeezing. Yep, castrate the bastards and then hand them up from a tree. Uh, I know that may sound very extreme, but hey, if, if, if anyone harms a child in any way, shape, or form, then I think it's, it's fair to say that they should be punished very severely for that, definitely. Uh, the victims of rape gangs of the UK should sue the government, uh, the UK government too. I, I agree with that, yeah. Because uh, what happened here, one of them had committed multiple uh, burglaries, no surprise there. Um, when it comes to, to, to the grooming gang scandal here in the UK, uh, the UK government, if I have anything, they tried to, they really tried to sweep that under the rug. Um, and... Uh, I don't know if I'm right in saying this, but they they tried to bring out some report of the grooming gang scandal, but they tried to blame it on, oh, it, it wasn't just like Muslim grooming gangs that had to do with this, but it, it was also to do with, uh, I think it was like uh, some some like white men that they they tried to blame it as well. I mean, again, it just goes to show you the lengths of um, all these government types that really want to. Um, to, to pretty much dismantle anything to do with European history, culture, and also our people. Um, and it's, again, it's, like I said before, it's just only going to get worse and worse and worse from here. Uh, there's far more cases of whites being attacked by non-whites to avoid these is deliberate. Yep, that's absolutely true, Scottish Tam. Uh, even to you too, Schrodinger is a Gaffney. Thank you for watching the stream. Um... And again, I know it's, it's a bit of a black pill to report the story, but I think it's, it's, it's important to talk about this because it's um, it's a perfect case example of why multiculturalism simply does not work in any way, shape, or form. It definitely does not work in any means. Uh, Hound of Ulster. I tried to make a playlist of Irish people getting attacked in the South and YouTube took down all the videos, but non any non-white create crime videos is, is front page. No wonder people think it isn't real. Yeah, exactly. Because the the, the, the uh, social media again, like like YouTube and all that, they just try to censor that, that that type of stuff. Because again, it goes against the narrative. See, what's going on just now is we're being taught that white people have privilege. White people are uh, should write the the sins, rewrite the sins of their past. You know, like like colonization and slavery and all of that. But Whenever there's a case of attacks towards the whites, verbally or physically or anything like that at all, it never gets reported. And like I said before, the only reason why it never gets reported because it goes against the agenda. It goes against the leftist and the, and the uh, narrative and the whole Kalergi plan that's going on just now, of course. It's going completely against that. So of course they'll, they'll try and do everything they can to sweep it under the rug and it's no wonder why people simply just don't believe that. Of why you think, well, it's a bit of a conspiracy theory. Like, surely that, that's not the case whatsoever, but it's definitely happening, folks. And like, and when it comes to the 20, 2066 prediction, it's only going to get worse from here. Well, if it's 2066, but there may be a possibility of the, of the migrant crisis going on just now that it's going to get, it might be even lower than 2066. Who knows? 
who knows with that. So the one last final final thing I want to mention about this case um, is a horrible, tragic event, and my heart goes out to the family who've been affected by this. Uh, I'm pretty sure in the chat <clears throat> just now that you guys can showcase some uh, uh, emojis for, for the chat. Now, I was going to say, regarding to this case, if you, if you can all type in an F for, for pay respects, but... I don't think that's a, like, a good idea. The reason I say that is because the, the whole press F to pay respects thing on the internet is mostly done as like like, like, like a meme sort of thing. So and I think because of a horrible case like this, that does come off as, as a quite inappropriate, in my opinion. So what I would ask, if you all can, of, of, of course, is <clears throat> with, with the uh, emoji symbol in your chat just now, like I said, if you can... If you could find like maybe like a rose or a flower, I mean maybe post that in the chat just now as like a symbol of showing your respect to Le Leone of what happened to her. So hold on just one second. And this is the part where I need a drink of water because my throat is starting to parch. Yeah, there we go. Like rambling rattlesnake, for example. That's that's a good start. So yeah, folks, if you can in the chat, if you can uh, showcase some, something like that, what Ramblin' Rattlesnake did, uh, that would be really appreciated. Whoa, here we go. So Scotch Tan, Scott Sarmer, Rory Herbert. Yeah, everyone's doing that. That's awesome, guys. Thank you very much. Even Dragon Energy, thank you very much for watching the stream as well. Yeah, that that's really good. That's more like it. Th I'm sure maybe there'll be more showing, showcasing in the chat. Yeah, we even Darren Fox was showcased there. That's really appreciated. Yeah, that's way better than, say, press F for respects. But, uh, Baldy Old Fart, hello, how you doing? Thank you for watching the stream. I really appreciate that. Uh, let me see. <clears throat> right, let's see. Yeah, we still have more people coming in. Uh, Drust4, thank you for watching the stream. I think you're new to the channel. I really appreciate that. Uh, we've hardly any, if any, immigrants in Carlisle is so a, a bombard or a conservative MP with these stories and hope that it stays that way. Let's, let's see. Cyborg, even no bars, even to you too, Cyborg. I think you've said it even already, but maybe it's come back to the chat, I don't know. So, uh, Banks, you see, thank you for watching the stream. I really do appreciate that. Yeah, again, I really do appreciate the... Um, the chat here, guys, uh, was showcasing the flower emoji as paying respects to the only of what happened to her. I really do appreciate that. A week scouser, thank you for watching the stream. I really appreciate that. And there's also Sparky sixteen ninety. I really appreciate that as well, sir. Thank you very much. Uh, Saint Harrison. I don't know if I can see anything with that, but again, I'm sure it may be something like uh, different uh, regarding to like laptop or phone or whatever. But again, I really appreciate that. So. Let's see here. I've got a picture of you asleep in my car on Sunday. Oh, you, did you actually take a photo of that cyborg? Are you actually serious? Oh, my God. <laughs> uh, yeah, so what cyborg is talking about, um, this happened last week. I was out with PA Scotland. I, I, I've talked about this in the previous stream, but I was out with PA Scotland. Um, oh, don't say it. It was a rope. Oh, St. Harris, Jesus. Uh, I was out with PA Scotland to do a bit of hiking and I was absolutely exhausted after that so I was driving back with Cyborg <laughs> and I must have fell asleep in the car and that's why I got <laughs> so Cyborg I got a picture of, of you asleep in the car on Sunday morning well thank you Cyborg I really appreciate that so um but in all seriousness folks again really do appreciate that what you guys did in the chat there with the flowers so that's really awesome of you guys to do that uh, so I really appreciate that. Thank you once again for that, folks. Awesome of you guys. Jewel Citizen, thank you for watching the stream. Th thank you for being here. Um, <clears throat> what was I going to press here? Oh, yeah. Western civilization and the people of Europe. I uh, definitely agree with that. Yes, very true. Uh, let me see. <laughs> Cyborg sleeping like a baby. Well, you can't really blame me. I was, I was absolutely exhausted that day. Like, I was completely exhausted, so... <laughs> Um, right, so let me have a look here and see a bit of an update. Hold on a second. 
Apparently Dorset is racist as it's 98% white. Oh, you know, I remember seeing something about that uh, telegram earlier on when I was at work. I think it was Laura that must have shared something about that, but I'm not, not entirely too sure. But that could be something we can definitely talk about. In fact, what I'll do is, I'll see if I can get that article up just now, and then... What I will do is, I'll see if I can find that just now, and then I'll, I'll definitely talk about that later on. Oh no, after this part here. Because what I'm just going to do, guys, is I'm just going to have a quick break, just for five minutes or so, and then I'll come back with a bottle of water, and then we'll continue on from there. So, uh, in the meantime, I'll play a short video. I just forget you guys to, to, uh, to watch something in the meantime, and then we'll see from there. Uh, let me have a look here and see what you guys can watch or react to. Let me see just now. Oh, that could be something you guys can watch just for a wee bit. Again, only just for like five minutes or so, but... Uh, right, share the stream. <laughs> you were tired. I went an hour hour out my way to get you and you fell asleep on me. <laughs> well, my apologies, Cyborg. My apologies. <laughs> See if I can find that article. Because even this morning when I looked at this article at work, I, I thought, oh, this would be perfect to talk about. Uh, with tonight's episode, uh, let me have a look here, because of course, from what I can see from the foot from the photo of the article, I think it's from the BBC. Um, the person in question who's you know bitching about this, uh, oh, there's like ninety eight percent of white people living in Dorset, is a is a is a jogger. So no surprise there, of course. Um, and I remember seeing it was. Laura that shared it might have been someone else I'm not into oh yeah here we go so yeah it's definitely from the BBC that's perfect so rural racism in Dorset why is our countryside 98% white what right, but anyway let me just share the screen here just now is that cyborgs right remember to like and subscribe folks that's absolutely true uh, thank you for that cyborg really appreciate that my, my, my dude uh, let me see Sorry, oh, Chef Works plays have it with your stream, watching schedule, evening. Well, even to you too, Gamma Sandwich, I really appreciate you coming along. And uh, whether you're working or not, I still appreciate that. So, uh, let me see here. Oh, hold on. Uh, Chief Money, I used to know the Jag Patel mentioned in the Racism in Dorset article. My son did a newspaper round for him as a teenager, and my wife taught his daughters to swim. Oh, that's interesting. That's really interesting. Uh, right, let me see. So, I'll just get to this article here again. Like I said, from the BBC, there's a good reason why I got a second home in Dorset. Jogger ex escape insurance policy that's from Dragon Energy. Oh dear. Uh, talking of shares, I have to go. I'm on, on night nights. Take care of all. Thank you for uh, thank you very much, Amanda Lee. I really appreciate you coming along. So, you take care and stay safe. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, oh, you hide that part there. Oh, what was I also going to read? 98% in a white <laughs> area, how shocking. I know, it's, I imagine Paul Joseph Watson shock, right? I mean, it's just it's absolute terrible. Uh, right, let's get to this article here. Like I said, from, from the BBC, and this was, oh, this was a day ago. All right, cool. From the BBC News, rule of racism in Dorset. Why is our countryside 98% what? Uh, let's see, writer Louisa Adioa, Parker says people make assumptions about her, her because of her looks. Well, she, she has a jogger after all. I mean, what would she expect? Anyway, so let's have a look at this uh, just now. Oh, here we go. We're not we're not even into the article already, and already they're talking about George Floyd, Saint George Floyd himself, and also Black Lives Matter. What <laughs> what a surprise, folks! What an absolute surprise. Uh, anyway, let's read this out right here. The death of George Floyd and the sub 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 subsequent Black Lives Matter, I can't speak tonight, protests may have seemed a distant reality to many people in Dorset. In a predominantly rural country, the population is 97.9% white. Well, there you go. You just answered your whole, your whole thing right there. It's, it's, it's a rural area. Of course, there's going to be a lot more white people living, living white, a lot more white people living in that area because it's a rural fucking area. What a surprise, right? Well, this is not really a surprise. Why, why, why would anyone be surprised at that? But, but 
As some, the 2.1% who do not identify as white can testify, racism can be just as much of a problem in the countryside as it is in our cities. Oh my god, here we go. Jack Patel moved to uh, Gyeongnam, I think I pronounced it, not, uh, eight, eight, 18 years ago, with his wife, where they bought a newspaper shop and started a family. But having moved from North London, of London, no, no surprise there. The couple said they, they were unprepared for the prejudice they and their three daughters would endure. So what? So I'm curious, what kind of prejudice are we talking about here? Is it the case of uh, going up to them and asking, like, oh, which uh, country of birth their family's from, or something along those lines? And I don't think these people would have anything, uh, any room to, to criticize people of of treating them differently. When well, let's be honest here, they're the type of people within our British society that they would have the privilege and not us white people. But for some odd reason, it's white people that have privilege. Really makes you think, doesn't it? Uh, anyway, let's continue on from here. Jack Patel says people have shouted racial slurs in front of his children. I, 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 don't, I, I don't know if that were to be the case, but who was it in the chat that said about that hold on one sec because someone uh, who was in the chat that said it hold on there is someone da, da, da. Oh, damn it i'm trying to th th see because someone brought up an interesting point about jag and c here can't quite find it nah never mind we'll, we'll come back to that uh, let's see here. So, Mr. Pat Mr. Patel, who now works as a taxi driver in the capital, can recount numerous incidents, including abuse sheltered from people in passing cars and being stopped by a woman who openly asked, why did you come here? Why didn't you, you go to your own country and buy a shop? He said, coming from London, I wasn't used to anyone speaking to me in that way because I grew up in quite a multicultural area. Well, there you go. The reason why you never experienced, you know, racism or quote-unquote prejudice is because you're from a multicultural area like London. And London was never all was never like that. London has always been a predominantly white area, but because of the changes when it comes to multi uh, and and the uh, blatant attempt to promote multiculturalism into Britain, well, mainly in parts of England, Scotland, Wales, and and of course Ireland, you can see that of course London has became a, or turned into a multicultural hellhole. So it's, it's a bit of an interesting question of why they would move from London and move over to a countryside where, where it's predominantly a white area. I mean, I, I, it's a bit of a reach, but I don't know if maybe if they're being paid to, to, to make these points or anything like that, but you, know, you, you never know. Any, anything's possible nowadays. Anything's possible. Uh, but that was easy. The lady coming up to me, honestly, was easy because someone is coming up to me and telling me her intentions. What's difficult is when people come into the shop and they quite clearly have a face at you. Criminologist and co-author of Rural Racism, Professor Neil Chakra Aborti, I think you pronounce it, uh, describes that face as covert racism. Gee, there's that term again, covert racism. And it says victims are often left unsure if, if, if what they are experiencing is, is discrimination. Um, he said being made to wait for food to be served in a restaurant or a cafe, or sometimes even complete re refusal, you feel uncomfortable describing this as some racism because you're, you're thinking, is this me or am I being demanding? I think it's a case of you just being demanding. Uh, and maybe you're and when it comes to the whole racism racism part, you're looking way, way, way too deep into it. But again, even just reading this just now, there's clearly a bigger agenda going on here. Um, noticing people were crossing the street to avoid you. Why is that happening? Is it me? Am I intimidating? Again, this is just a case of someone looking deep into it. Maybe they, they just wanted to cross the road because it's a convenience to them, because they're heading to a shop or a house. Whatever the case may be, the, this is just a case example of, the, of this person looking way too deep into it. Way too deep into it. Persistent staring, constant reminders from neighbours who say, we don't see many like you around here. Well, 
of course they're going to say stuff like that because it's a predominantly white area. Like, that's like someone who is white, right, moves to, like, an all-black area, or, well, I don't know why you would do that anyway, but that's beside the point, or an all-Asian area, or an all-Middle Eastern area, and then those people will, will say the exact same thing to, 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 to the white person. Oh, we don't see your kind in the, a lot in this area, because it's a predominantly type of, like, in this case, it, where they're living at just now in Dorset, it's a predominantly white area, so, of course, there's going to be people that are just like, oh, we don't see your, your kind in this area a lot. Because, like I said, I, I do apologize if I sound like, like I'm re repeating myself here, but it's absolutely true in what I'm saying. It's a predominantly white area. You're going to get questions like that regardless. <coughs> Let's see. Uh, uh, this professor said the vast majority of people who, had removed, who have moved from the city said they had encountered more racism in rural areas than they had in the city. Yeah, that's because London is a multicultural hellhole, but that's beside the point. Uh, Louisa Adioha Parker, a writer and poet of English and... and Gin, let's see, Gin, Gin, I know it's Ghana, but Ghanaian uh, heritage, was born and raised in the UK and, and has lived in Devon and Dorset since she was a child. But seemingly innocent comments from others are a reminder that she is seen by some as an outsider. Well, is there any reason wonder why? I mean, just fucking look at her. She's 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 a black woman. I mean, of course, there's gonna be people looking at her and thinking like she she's completely different to everybody because of her of her skin color, her ethnicity, and, and possibly her heritage. There's gonna be people like that. I mean, I, I like I said before, I make this point. If it was a white person moving into a non-white area, the same questions are going to be asked to them as well. But they'll probably be treated far worse because they're white, and what what the non-whites are being treated are being taught when it comes to our education systems, when it comes to our, the workforce, when it comes to mainstream media, anything to do with that at all, they're being taught that the whites are 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 are, are treating them badly and 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 are, are, are putting them down within society. And that's why they should retaliate against us white people. But I do see there's a video here within this article. So we'll just have a quick look at this just now. And then continue on from there with the article. So let's have a go here. Not being a racist is no longer enough. It's going to take work and it's going to be tough. I'm Louisa and I'm trying to raise awareness about racism in rural communities. When I wrote the poem, I was writing things I'd wanted to say for a long time, but it felt uncomfortable because I was basically writing it to people that I love and people I've grown up with. Now it just feels as though the white community is more prepared to, to listen. To the white southwest boys with wet mouths full of slurs. White boys to whom I was barely a girl. To the white teacher who informed me I wasn't too bright. To my white friends who like me but weren't bothered to fight. When I was growing up, it was really apparent that I was the only person with a brown skin or, or of mixed heritage around because I've always lived in, in white sort of rural areas. To the white kids who stuck dirty hands in my curls. To the white boys who insulted me but not the white girls. I think I was first aware of my difference from the age of four and I remember being racially abused by, by children and by adults. To the white strangers in pubs whose head snapping got bolder. To the white friends who told me I had a chip on my shoulder. It had a huge impact on my, on my self-esteem. I believed that I was really ugly, and for many years I felt as though I didn't belong here. I felt really unwelcome, and that I didn't look right, like my face didn't fit. To the white friends who silenced Oops. stitching my lips. Uh, so we're halfway through into it. I mean, oh my god. It's just, it's this whole victim narrative once again. Oh, you poor little tender angel baby. Like, everyone should feel sorry for you. Let me just put put the chance, uh, well, let me just take the chance to play the world's smallest violin. I mean, just, which is, again, what did she, like, look, she's living in an all-white area. There's going to be more stuff with that regardless of where she goes in this area you know uh, just uh, th <laughs> this is just another case example of, of trying to make white people look bad with this whole anti-white narrative going on and i guarantee because of of uh 
this idea, of, well, not idea, but this whole thing that's going on just now in the UK, the white flight uh, situation going on just now, where you have white people living in uh, white metropolitan areas, like London, for example, cannot stand the multiculturalism and decide to move into rural areas. Well, they're, all the leftists, all, all, all these people who are against the white people are looking at this and think, ooh, they're finding their own place to... to, uh, to to, to go to go by so they're probably looking at uh, looking at that and think hey we could probably try and make a narrative around this too and trying to get more migrants moving into these rural areas it's i mean maybe people may think i'm, I'm being a, I, I don't want to come off as like a major conspiracy theorist or anything like that at all but we've seen what happened with multiculturalism and in, in these metropolitan areas and it's only going to get worse from there. Now they're probably probably trying to promote something like that with these rural areas, like oh we need to de decrease uh, white people living in rural areas. They're they're always trying to do everything they can to get rid of us in any way, shape, or form. They're trying every single book they can to try and get rid of us. It's just plainly disgusting. Uh, let's just continue on from there. Drips. To the white friends who didn't stop all the poisonous drips. To the white friends I grew up with in this green and white space who never had to think about their colour or their race. To the white friends who listened, you know who you are. Thank you for your allyship. This is only the start. I've been basically writing about racism in the countryside and researching it and talking to different people for nearly 20 years now. I've got together a website and a podcast series called Where Are You Really From? Yeah, thank you, Sean, for joining us. Um, can you introduce yourself and say a little bit perhaps about your heritage? I, know I wanted to find a way to support other people to tell their stories too because there are lots of us here. And now is the moment perfect for growth, to pull up the seeds of the hate that was sown. Examine your whiteness, which some wear with pride. Has your skin colour caused you to fear for your life? What we're seeing right now is that more white people... Right, I, I, I want to go back to that real quick because I think that's interesting what she said there. Uh, hold on one sec, let me see if we can find that timestamp. Which some wear with pride. Has your skin colour caused you to fear for your life? Right, that part right there, which of course is addressing to the white people. Uh, you know, white. Has your skin colour made you fear for your life? Why don't you ask the people in South Africa how they felt, especially the white farmers in South Africa, how do you think they felt? Some of them were severely injured and, and some of them were, were, were fucking killed because of... Of, uh, of of what's going on with diversity and multiculturalism you know why don't you ask the, the white farmers in south africa how they felt you know fearing for their lives because of their skin color like this whole this whole the idea of like she's oppressed because she's living in a white rural area like it always would do if you really think it's that bad of an area then it's it's it's, it's you're, you're treated differently you're treated badly because of your skin color your heritage and all of that then Here's a simple solution. Why not just leave the area, go back to a, a mo well, I was going to say go back to London or any metro metropolitan area where it actually promotes multiculturalism, or if not that, why don't you just go and move over to your your uh, native homeland or, or your, your ancestral homeland, as I should say. Why not just do that? Why are you complaining about the rural area or, or the white people in that area treating you badly? Which, I, I to be honest with you, I've never really been to to any more. I never really stayed in the in any rural area before, but I highly doubt that that the, the stuff being said about the, the white people living there. I highly doubt that, that that's what they would act like. I mean, I I I don't know if that's true for sure, but I doubt it. But again, if it's such a bad place to live in for yourself, why not just fucking leave, go, get out of there, leave the people living in the rural areas alone, let, just let leave them be, and just move somewhere else, move to your ancestral homeland, I don't know, just get the hell out of there. But of course not, we live in a time where everyone has to be a victim, well, anyone who's like non-white essentially, has to be the victim, us white people have to feel guilty, write, rewrite the sins of our past and all of that, and trying to erase us any way shape they can, whether it's culture, whether it's history, whether it's our people or our heritage, anything to do with white people, they're trying to erase us as humanly possible. Uh, let me 
continue on here. What we're seeing right now is that more white people are aware of racism and it's something they perhaps haven't really considered before because they haven't had to. You'll need to relearn our history from 400 years and it's ugly and dark and you'll have to face fears. In this situation, there's an opportunity for real change. It's important to sit and listen to, to, to what we're saying, what we have been saying for a long time. You might have just noticed it. We've lived it for years. It's going to be uncomfortable. It's going to take tears. But we belong to these days and we belong to these hours. You can make new choices and you do have the power to dismantle old structures, to tear them apart, make way for the new, create space in your heart. I think we need to keep talking about it. We need to keep fighting it and challenging it, wherever it might be. Let us walk proud and belong to this land. Walk with me, friends, allies, come, take my hand. Oh, shut up. See, uh, going back to what she said there just now, this whole idea of wherever racism is, we need to be there and challenge it. Though, it's just bullshit. It's just code words for anti-white. That, that's literally what it, it boils down to. It's basically her saying, if there's any white areas or anything like that at all, we need to challenge it. We need to get rid of it somehow. That's essentially what she's basically saying, but they're trying to hide that idea of, well, it's not that, it's it's racism, you know, and all that, which, racism is basically code words for anti-white anyway. So when you hear, oh, when there's racism, we need to go there and challenge it, we need to get rid of it somehow, they're basically talking about white people. That's basically what they're, what they're saying here. It's just flat out ridiculous. And of course, that's in the video, so thank God for that. Um... I'll just finish off with the article from here and then we'll continue on with the last segment of the of the episode. So let's see what it says here. And also my apologies for the, for, for the background noise. That's just my windows open because of course it was boiling hot today. So just keep them open. So uh, anyway, I'll just continue on from here. Uh, one such conversation she describes was with a taxi driver who picked her up from Dorchester, Dorchester Station to take her home. He said, he just said, I know where you where you're going, you're going to work. We get a lot of uh, car carers down from London. They go off, look after people, then get back on the train to London. I said, I'm just going home actually, and I'm a wait and I'm a writer. He just assumed, looking at the colour of my skin, that I was a care worker and, and in his head, that's the only reason a black person could be at a train station in, in Dorchester. See, it's stuff like that, I don't buy that for a second, like it could be something completely made up on the spot because it sounds too too precise and too specific especially what he says <clears throat> what she claims what the guy said to her that sounds oddly uh, like uh, specific you know I, I don't really buy this for for an instant but she she, she she says such incidents have happened time and time again. It gives you that feeling of, oh, okay, people don't see me as a belonging here because of the color of my skin and the texture of my hair. This is my home. In terms of my culture, I'm a white West country person, but in terms of my looks, I look like I'm from somewhere else. Well, that's because you do like you're, you're, you're from somewhere else, whether it's from, say, the continent of Africa and in terms of, of, of your culture, you're a white West country person? No. You may be a citizen of, of that area, but you're certainly not like culturally or ethnically speaking from that area. That's far from that. You know, you're from the continent of Africa, or at least your people, your, your ancestors were from the continent of Africa. You just embrace that already. <clears throat> um, Mrs. Parker said it was to be expected that some people in rural areas had stereotypes in their minds. I didn't know such comments were rarely born of any malice. And, and to quote, I think there's this idea that a racist is a bad person, but I think good people can also have racist beliefs and unconscious bias, stereotypes in their mind, and that's understandable, particularly in the West country, because we don't have these conversa conversations very much. Uh, we don't have large numbers of people from ethnic backgrounds who, who are non-white British, so, so it often does stem from ignorance. When you walk into a room and, and you are the only person of color, you stand out to look different. You can't blend in, into the landscape around you, but really you just feel like someone someone else. I'm British. And no, you're not British. I'm sorry, but you're definitely not British in this case. You're a British citizen, but you're ethically not British. I'm sorry, but you're not. 
And that feeling of standing out is just one of, of the reasons why comparatively few people of color visit, visit the countryside. According to Phil Young, a campaigner and sports enthusiast who wants to bring more diversity to outdoor spaces. Oh my god, sounds like a major cuck. He said, when I go to the countryside, I have a fantastic time and most of the people are really friendly and happy to see you, but it's still very difficult if five young black men wearing hoodies go into a country pub. Well, no shit, because they're, <laughs> because they're, they're young black men wearing hoodies, so of course there's going to be that stereotype of maybe they're going to plan on doing something here, if they don't want people to think like that, maybe dress differently or maybe behave differently. That's all you have to do. Uh, for the rest of the, of the pub to look around and go, are these guys here to sell drugs? Because that's what the media tells us. Well, there you go. When you get that hostility towards you just for being with your friends, nine times out of ten, people will say, well, you know what? I'm not even going to put myself there. If it's racist in a city like London where there's over 3 million people who identify as black, Asian or minority ethnic, why would you put yourself in a position to go into a countryside where there's less than 3% of people who look l like you? Exactly, that's a very valid point. Why bother going to a rural area where you know that it's a, it's a majority white area? Why would you bother going there and then cry if it... Oh, of course, so they, they cry a victim, then this gets picked up, and hopefully they, 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 they bring in more diversity within these rural areas. Like that, That's the whole point here, is to try and erase white people as humanly possible. And I'm just moving the microphone here real quick, just put in the back here for more space. Uh, <clears throat> hold on one sec. That should be better. Perfect. Uh, let me see here. When you get that hot... Oh, no, I read that part already. Sorry, my bad. Um, and while Dorset's real uh, ideal might seem a million miles away from the protests that spread across the US and the UK last summer, Miss Parker claims that they might have more to do with the history of the countryside or the country than we realize. Here we go. If we see a black African American man being killed at the hands of the police in America, here we go. We're going to bring in George Floyd into this. Is anyone really that surprised that they'll use George Floyd as like some political stance here? Jesus. They'll probably use George Floyd till the end of time, until we're completely gone. And then once once we're completely gone, they'll just drop it like, like a hat. Um, where was I here? Oh yeah, here we go. It might feel as though that's got nothing to do with us, nothing to do with Dorset, she said. But actually, it was white men from Dorset and the and the West Country who left the area, traveled around the world, colonized other countries, set up plantations, enslaving people, and they were some of the first people instrument instrumental in setting up the systems of white supremacy that we see today. Jesus, this this I yeah again this whole anti white narrative going on just now, it's. In full steam ahead here. You know, just to make a point real quick. Let's see, if it wasn't for Britain colonizing uh, Africa or, or, the, or the continent of Africa, then all these people, the, the black slaves, they would never be slaves. And then if, most of what the black people were saying today, you know, bitching and complaining about colonization and slavery and all of that, if Britain never colonized uh, the continent of Africa, their ancestors would never be slaves to begin with. So... Ah, I guess so. Um, with all, all these conversations going on in the media about race, Meghan Markle and Black Lives Matter, I think it is quite easy to educate yourself. There are lots of, of, it, of resources out there. Yeah, probably very biased resources, I should say. Very biased resor resources. And that's the end of the article there from the BBC. What complete utter cringe that was. Oh my god, and, and talk about the entitlement from this this lassie, Jesus, the sheer entitlement, like I said before earlier on, if she thinks it's such a bad area to live in because of who she is and her skin colour, her heritage or whatever, then just leave, just go back to where you came from, that's all that needs to be said and done, just go go somewhere else, just leave, just leave. get out of there. Uh, oh, that's the wrong one. Everyone's typing chat. There are always Israeli NGO workers waiting for them on our beaches to help them out into our lands. Yeah, yeah, ex exactly. I, w I wonder why that is. Again, it, it just r really makes you think, doesn't it? 
The white pill is that your police are absolute cowards. Start lifting them, making friends. They'll shit their pants. Yeah. It's just, it's, 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 it's beyond ridiculous at this point, really. While Israel send them back to, uh, back to Africa. Uh, is Africa who sold the blacks into slavery in the first place? Oh, well, Ragnar, you can't, you can't say that. That's a, that's a conspiracy theory. You know, that, that, that goes against the, the narrative. How dare you say something like that? I mean, it's entirely true, but, you know. I agree, support PA. I definitely support patriotic alternative in any way, shape, or form. Um, with that, all our countries were like Dorset. Yeah. Oh yeah, one in the chat. If we're not sorry, yeah, definitely type in one in the chat. I'll even type in one as well. Why not? There we go. One in the chat. There we go. Uh, the NGOs, the diasporas, uh, soldiers. Let's see here. What else is said? Yeah, using people's deaths for political gain. Typical, yep, yeah, definitely typical behavior with that. Oh, let's use George Floyd for the umpteenth billionth time in a row. They're preparing Dorset for multiculturalism. Dorset should be uh, should be asked. I always say, what did Sweden do? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we Dorset folks are responsible for colonization and the slave trade, for goodness sake. Yeah, exactly right. It's, it's completely ridiculous. Dorset supremacy based. Yes, yeah, does sound pretty based. <laughs> uh, let me see here. WTF has George Floyd got to got to do with Dorset? <laughs> you tell me. But again, that 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 goes back to this whole narrative. They're they're just using his corpse as a way to try and promote some political agenda. Well, we need to talk about racism and have more diversity in these areas. Look what happened to George Floyd. They don't really give a damn about George Floyd. They just, they're just only using them, or in this case, using his corpse, just to promote a political agenda. That's what it comes down to. That's what it boils down to here. Uh, it's fun and all to laugh at these kids of idiots, but they are at their core overgrown children. They will still whine about their perceived injustice as they beat you. Yeah, no, that's definitely a good point. That's definitely a good point. Um, same for, for the fentanyl. Uh, then get out of the room. Area, uh, county, country. Uh, let me see. Thank the Lord for my local. The only place guaranteed for indigenous thirsty locals. Yeah, that's very good to hear that, Henry. That's good to hear. Uh, excellent, stay away, you're unwanted. <laughs> 53 likes, one dislike, 51 in chat, great support, folks. You know, that, that's definitely true. I really do support the the, um, the support here, guys. I really do appreciate that. By God's, we'll have our home again. That's a song with that. And you think none of, none of this applies in reverse, our souls. Yep, yeah, that's definitely true. It's like rules for, for one group of people, but a completely different rule for another group of people, of course. She should blend in that. No, <laughs> I agree. Jeez. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, why do people assume I'm not British? <laughs> oh dear. To be British, you first have to be white English, Scottish, Welsh, Welsh, Northern Irish, and have heritage on these islands. No, that's definitely true. So for these people to bitch about, oh, I'm British, even though I'm not white. I'm. I'm sorry. You're not ethically British. You're ethically a different. Uh, uh, from a different continent. In this case, with this woman, she, her ethnicity is, of course, African. It's no surprise they are. It's not her, your home, it's ours, and that's definitely true. Give them the Arctic. <laughs> I don't think they will last in the Arctic, to be honest, I agree. I don't think they would last for a second in the Arctic. Never happened. Uh, file that story in the, in, in the never happened uh, pile. Yeah, definitely I, I agree with that, what, what she mentioned there. Couldn't care less if it was completely legitimate. Yeah, no one would, would, would really give a damn. Give them Doggerland. <laughs> uh, this has spoiled my weekend. Eve uh, put me on a right down. Oh, don't worry about that, Darren Fox. Don't worry about that. Uh, just leave us the fuck alone. We've given them London for fuck's sake. Never relax. Um... 
a <laughs> good video, a good shit poem. <laughs> Our ruling elites are the biggest supremacists. Israel has a law against inter intermarriage. Now that's definitely true with regard to Israel. And there's definitely laws with intermarriages uh, in Israel. So. Our forefathers didn't go to war and build these nations for them. They built them for us. It's our res and it's our responsibility to protect them. It's definitely that I do agree with that. But sadly, it's been sold away to multiculturalism, diversity, and all that nonsense. It's, it's it really is sad, but it's definitely the, the truth there. Thirteen to fifty makes us very wary of, of the blacks. Hence, white flight. Uh, just leave us alone. One absolute uh, vicious mission. <laughs> Good vent. Uh, let me see. She, if, if she's waiting for a long uh, for, for me to cry she's got a fucking long wait <laughs> I never feel uncomfortable talking about race or slavery I rather enjoy laying facts on these kids of, of fuds <laughs> uh, can I ask why the hell do blacks call Englishmen racist in America I get I get it because slavery uh, but what what did Brits ever do to them exactly well again it goes back to this whole anti-white narrative uh, it, people may ask, well, what does this have to do with Dorset or Britain or anything like that at all? Again, these people promoting this anti-white agenda, they don't care. They'll just say anything regarding to any westernized countries or white European countries, and they'll just say, well, we think this is problematic because A, B, and C. And, and all of this is all done to try and uh, try to erase white, uh, white heritage, white culture, white people you name it anything to do with european uh, or even white people they just want to get rid of that as humanly possible this is the biggest street is steaming pile of bullshit i ever heard exactly with regard to that woman racism is not born of ignorance it, in the pre pre preponderance of cases is merely cause and effect our history quote unquote uh not your history, love, exactly. Whites in Britain are treated as third-class citizens in their own homeland. Now, that's definitely true. That is definitely true with that. When the IRA were setting off bombs, literally, the London Irish didn't play the victim card. They fucked off back to Ireland and actually fought. Yeah, no, that's definitely true. Yes, my white skin colour. Contact with blacks may be racist, simple as... Lord Rothschild wants to crossbreed his herds of cattle. Are there still people typing it? Yeah, there's still people typing one in the chat. That's good. The owners of the slave ships were, if I tell you, they will shut this down. <laughs> uh, don't worry about that. That's fine. Mm. Good evening, brethren. Good evening, good evening to you too, Marcus SS. I really appreciate you coming along. That's awesome if you do that. Uh, they don't need to ask. They own the media. Uh, let me see. Chief Woody, the best arguments for nationalists are definitely economic in, in nature, in my honest opinion. Uh, despite my principal concern being demographics. Um, I, 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 can, I, can see, I, can, I can definitely see that, Joel. Citizen. really do see that. That's a good point. Build a local group of lads, three to five, in a good size. Do your own activism and bonding with them. Meet up with, with other Nats when you are ready. Well, I'm, I'm already doing that as we speak. I agree. <coughs> I, I, most of the time, I get together with some a group of lads from other pl places in Scotland. We're all from, part of the same group anyway, PA Scotland. Uh, we all get together at, from time to time, handing out leaflets, doing letter picking. Uh, well, I still need, need to do that, to be honest, letter picking, but... Uh, going out, doing hikes, uh, group activities, uh, placing out banners when uh, when it's just us around, uh, taking photographs to showcase that we were there sort of thing. And uh, really just doing proper activism regarding the PA Scotland and, and also other regional groups with, with patriarchal alternative doing this similar or the same thing. So we're already doing that. Uh, and hopefully more people join and we'll definitely see if we can get ourselves out there as, as humanly possible. Especially when it comes to the Indig Indigenous Peoples Day for the 9th of August. There's good, I'm not going to mention major things, but there's going to be major uh, setups we're going to be doing. Well, I don't, I don't want to say setups, but there's going to be some major things happening for that day. And I'm not going to mention too much about that, but it's definitely... Some uh, really awesome things are going to come along the way regarding to that. So, um, 
let me see. They used George Floyd or Trayvon Martin, but just there to mention Eve. Uh, but just there to mention Eve Ackerland, though. Yeah, that's a good point. Dublin Corp and Limerick were Viking slave port where the, where they sold white native people into slavery. But these people never read another books. Uh, they never do that, of course. Eyes British and she. <laughs> ah dear. John you know, you know, Powell MBE, thank you for watching the stream. I really appreciate you being here. Uh, can we not just nuke L London stand? Uh, nah, maybe not. No, maybe not. Maybe someday we can we can claim London back, but I think that that's going to take a long time. Of course, uh, Saint Patrick was a slave. We were the only people in the history of the planet to end slavery. Whereas gratitude, well, there, there will never be any gratitude, Scottish time, because. They don't give a damn if the British ended slavery. They, they all they care about is it's white people, and we need to make white people look bad. So by twenty sixty six, when we do become a well, if if it does become if we do become a minority here in Britain, we'll just be treated like complete cattle. You think we'll be treated like second class citizens? I think it's going to be far worse. Just look what happened to the white farmers in South Africa. It's going to be that, but but times ten. It's going to be far worse. Uh, no, you wasn't Kangs. <laughs> uh, let me see here. What else is said? Uh, there's still more com comments coming through. Time for IRL. You know, that's, that's, that's definitely true. It's definitely time to actually get out there and do some protesting. Or being a, uh, an activist, of course. I'm glad to, I got to see the tail end of the stream. It's always inspiring to see that there are still tons of nationalists in Britain, stay strong, fellas. Well, thank you very much for, for watching the stream. I really do appreciate that. If it seems like you're new, new to the channel, if you are, then please subscribe to the channel for more content from future episodes and maybe future videos. And also like, like the stream if you haven't done so already. I would appreciate that. So, uh, why did my dad fight in World War Two? Well, I think we can all answer that when, when it comes to our forefathers. Uh, the reason, the real reason they hate us is is we remind them of how utterly useless most of them are. Peace, Scotland are doing the, the work of the gods, I agree. Indigenous first, I also agree with that. The indigenous people of these islands need to come first. Why did my granddad get killed by mustard gas World War I? <clears throat> uh, let me see what else is said. If only we lost, yeah. Uh, are Scotland going to the take the W for Indigenous People State again? Uh, us Southerners need to step up our game. Uh, but you never know. Maybe the other regional groups might win this year. Maybe it might be PA Scotland. I think it might be PA Scotland again. But again, something might happen. Maybe another regional group like Yorkshire or um, another like maybe Mid Midwest might win this year. I don't know, but. Just get out there and, and, and support the cause, that's all I have to say. And then maybe you might win the competition this year, but we never know. I I don't fancy getting nude if it's all the same, thanks. <laughs> My granddad died in Auschwitz, he fell out of a car. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Very dark joke, but it's a joke nonetheless. So <laughs> thank you for, for that, uh, Baldy Old Fart. I really appreciate the joke. <laughs> <clears throat> uh, get out there and promote White Lives Matter. We will definitely be doing that for uh, Indi Indigenous Peoples Day for the 9th of August. We will definitely be doing that. Um, quarter is well, was almost quarter to eight just now, so we're almost coming to the end. I'm, I'm trying to think like who's going to be live this evening. Because uh, I think there's usually someone after me or run that starts at 8 p.m. But I know that uh, Professor Edward Dutton is live just now. But who else is live at the moment? Or who's going to be live after me? I'm wondering that myself. Uh, let me see. Rory Herbert, I just see a notification from yourself. Thank you very much for subscribing to the channel. I really appreciate that. For how many subs am I on just now? Hold on. Just let me have a quick check. There we go, 970. It might be more, I'm not entirely too sure, but uh, uh, white, white Boy Summer, definitely agree with that. Uh, Banksy, Patriotic Alternative, read their plan. No, definitely. For those who haven't done so already, please take the time to go on to the PA website and just read their entire manifesto, because uh, I think it's important for you guys to do that. 
Uh, back on here. Right. So, uh, can anyone still hear me just now? Hold on. Yeah, no audio. Yeah, of course, it muted. Yeah, uh, Moody, where, where is he? Uh, yep, yeah, so that's who is going to be live tonight. Yeah, John Davidson, he's going to be live at 9 o'clock tonight with a surprise guest. So that's going to be good. Uh, yeah, can you guys still hear me? Yeah, yes, you're back. Sorry about that. I don't know what the hell happened there. So, um, it's, I think maybe it was because my, my, uh, my VPN started to go off and then I tried to connect it to another server, but... Or I, but then it turns out my entire internet went down or kind of sparked out. So for that, again, my apologies for that. So uh, I don't know. I, I think it was my internet kind of cut off there. But that's me back. So well, let me just go back and see <laughs> what was said. Because I, I, I do see there's a lot of people seeing uh, yeah, F. So <laughs> let me see. Yeah. Well, <coughs> My first time here, excellent channel, I just subscribed, thank you very much for that. What I was going to do was see if I can get to this page here. Uh, right, and then... Player... Oh, here we go, our plan, that's what I want to do. Right, copy and paste that. Paste it into the chat. Just posting the link for the Patriotic Alternative website, but specifically the page for the Our Plan page. I'll just point out here. If meter ran out, here, <laughs> sure. <laughs> Yeah, so that's the link for uh, for our plan for the comes a patriotic alternative, and there we go. So, again, my apologies for that. I guess my internet was 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 spared now. So, it's because I was. <laughs> oh dear. Yeah. So uh, there was a prize for the best demonstration on Indigenous Peoples Day when it comes to patriotic alternative. So if you want your regional group to win this year, besides PS Scroll, when which I think PA Scotland will win, but if you want your regional group to win this year, please get active and actually and and, and do something for uh for Indigenous Peoples Day for the 9th of August. Just had the comment uh planet of of the <laughs> removed oh no it must be uh I guess YouTube walking in but FTP <laughs> spoken for <laughs> for cheap like a meter <laughs> oh dear Uh, we've been fighting for too long amongst ourselves. The real enemy is the establishment. No, I, I, that's definitely true. The, the establishment are the true enemy here. If only half PA plan was, was put in place, what a difference it would make. That's definitely true. Uh, yeah, they kidnapped Chief. <laughs> I blame COVID for the lack of sound. <laughs> uh, who pulled the plug out? No audio. Yeah, but I'm. Um, but yeah, back again. Back again, of course. Set the day, get out, have fun for the 9th of August for Indigenous Peoples Day. Doing a. a <laughs> anyway, got 10 bob. Uh, yep, yeah, that, yeah, that's fine. Cool. Got a split, take care of. Thank you very much, Joe Sesson, for being part of the stream. I really do appreciate that. You take care, stay safe. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, perfect. All right, well, just about 10 minutes to go. Uh, I really want to see, besides John Davidson, who will be live at 10 p.m., who else is going to be live uh, from my side? Hold on. Because I remember seeing something, uh, someone else is going to be live this evening, but I'm not entirely too sure who it's going to be. Uh, let me see. I don't know if it's Bonnie Live who's going to be live at 8 p.m. or if it's someone completely different. Uh, let me see. Second here. I just want to have a look and see who else was going to be. Because I'm pretty certain it's someone um, live at 8 p.m. on a Thursday, but who else would that be? No, nah, it wouldn't be no chance. He doesn't do regular streaming. It's just only very occasionally he does it. Uh, oh, no, it's just right myself. Right, that's fine. Cool. That's perfect. All right, well, that's good. Um, excellent. Save the children day from the jab. Uh, I definitely agree with that. Uh, Lee, isn't John on at 9 p.m.? I think it is 9 p.m., so, so definitely check out John Davidson tonight at 8 p.m., Fine, let me just see if I can find the link for his stream later on and then I'll just post it in uh link 
here. Davidson. Uh, let me see if I can find that here. Ah, here we go. That's his channel right there just now. Right, so it doesn't have a stream up there just yet, but what we'll do in the meantime is uh, good evening, U E L O. How are you doing? Uh, Dr. Ed Dutton. Right, well, let me just post this here. So here's the link for. Um, for John Davidson's channel. So if you haven't subscribed to him already, subscribe to his channel and then click on the bell icon for his content. That way you know when he's going live at 9 p.m. Uh, later on tonight. So definitely check him out. Uh, so that's fine here, that's perfect. In the meantime, what I'm gonna do guys is, oh, hold on one second. I don't know what the hell is wrong with the Northeast, but there is no PA up, up here. I remember someone talking about that this past Sunday's episode that they, uh, they want, I don't know if it was to do with like maybe Northeast or if it's a completely different region, but it's something that we could def definitely have a look into and see if we can get something sorted out with that. So maybe he signed off and went to watch Dutton. Anyway, good, good night, good people. You too, Linda, thank you for watching the stream. Uh, but yeah, as I was saying, we're definitely going to see if we can get something sorted out with that more regional groups for PA and see if we can get something sorted out with that. Um, in the meantime, guys, it's about 7.53. I'm just going to call an end to the stream there just now. Uh, seven minutes early, but maybe it might be longer than that because, again, with the outro song. Um, but other than that, I really do appreciate you guys turning up tonight. And uh, I wonder how many subs i got just now. I think it's just about 970, so... I'm very close away of hitting, or 971 to be exact, I'm very close away of reaching 1,000 subs, so we really are getting there, but other than that, I really do appreciate you guys uh, watching the stream tonight, I will be back with episode 11 of the Mood of the Nation podcast this Sunday at 6pm as always, uh, so please keep an eye out on that, and then I'll see you all go live then, so, um, perfect, so, let me just see if I can find an outro song for the stream, and then we'll, we'll just end the stream there. But other than that, I really appreciate you guys of tuning in, and you all take care for, for the time being. Like, share, and subscribe, that's definitely true. Uh, joining up, Powell MB, MBE, thank you for, for sharing that out. Uh, let me see. For those who who followed me for a while, thank you very much uh, I really do appreciate that. Those who are new to the channel, thank you very much for for uh, join for for uh, participating and and on the ride or uh, riding the along the, the ride with me. It's really appreciate you guys to do that. Uh, I will be back on Sunday, as I said before, with another stream, uh, episode eleven. Might have a special surprise for that day. I don't know, but you just need to wait and see. Uh, let me also put up the banner here. Oops, uh, one second here. Am I able to put up the banner? Yeah. I can still do that. that that's good. Perfect. I was, for some reason it didn't show up with that. But anyway, I, I can still do that. Excellent. Uh, right. So I'll put myself on mute and I'll play us like an outro song. Really appreciate the turnout, guys. It's really awesome of you guys to do that. Uh, great chat. Stay strong. 14. Uh, where are they jumping to? I'm, I'm pretty sure it's Edward Dutton's stream for, the, for now. And then once that's done, uh, John Davison will be live at 9 p.m. So, again, really appreciate you guys turning out. Uh, this is Chief Moody signing out, and I will see you all next time. You've been watching the Mood of the Nation podcast. Stay safe and take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bit of magic. A bit of magic? It's easy. Let's see.
likes and I likes what I do. I does what I likes and I likes. Thank you, most interesting. I does what I likes and I likes what I do. I does what I likes and I likes. I does what I likes and I likes what I do. I does what I likes and I likes. I does what I likes and I likes what I do. I does what I likes and I likes. Now how does that sound?